I am one of the millions of young black women who make up the backbone of the American progressive movement. Like too many of us, my journey of activism started by a senseless act of gun violence when a fellow student opened fire in my classroom in Parkland, Florida. As I laid beneath the lifeless body of my classmate, Nicholas Dorette, to survive, as bullets riddled my classmates, as my screams melted into the cries of the wounded, I was then born again with a voice that cannot and will not be muzzled. While the details of my story may be different from other impacted youth, my brush of death by a gun is, experienced by, is an experience that is shared by too many of our generation. I am not the first in my family to be affected by gun violence. My uncle Patrick was gunned down in the streets of Brooklyn, New York at the age of 18, just months after being beaten by NYPD who deemed his black body in a white neighborhood a threat. Gun violence is pervasive and extends well beyond high profile mass shootings. This violence is not inherent or a coincidence. It is a result of poor choices made by policymakers that all too often have racial undertones associated with it. The flow of guns into already struggling communities is often facilitated by white gun store owners who look the other way as traffickers buy guns used to terrorize black communities. Gun violence extends beyond the path of a bullet and creates multi-generational cycles of poverty as well as social and economic injustices. Law enforcement has for years failed to prevent the flow of guns into black communities as well as perpetuated violence in these communities themselves. Studies show that persistent gun violence in poor communities of color directly results from centuries of entrenched disadvantages, economic deprivation, and racist policymaking. In many ways, gun violence is the last domino to fall at the end of a long line of racism, trauma, and indifference. But this is not inevitable. Community-based intervention programs throughout the country have proven that holistic, culturally sensitive, embedded teams can start stop violence before it starts. We demand funding for these programs. We've seen the shooting from my high school gain worldwide attention. But the mass shooting that happened in Southeast DC three weeks ago, where 17 year old Christopher Brown lost his life and 20 people were, sh were wounded, got no attention. Be outraged equally for black lives. It's important that as I talk about gun violence, I address police violence. We must shift from a punitive to a rehabilitative model in the prison system. There is a need for a national conversation of defunding police departments and refunding our communities instead. We must reallocate those funds into schools, jobs, and needs for a comfortable life. We need to revisit the use force practices and eliminate conduct that places suspects at extreme harm once in custody. As has been established, officers nationwide lack accountability. For an officer who knows that he can kill an unarmed black man or woman and only get paid death duty as an result, anything less than that is business as usual. We must change this reality and empower citizens of the communities being policed to hold their local forces accountable. It is important that we recognize that the systematic oppression that continues to marginalize our communities is not an accident. America was built on a system that is still doing its job. Police violence is gun violence, and gun violence is a leading cause of death for black youth. We demand to live in peace. We demand to live in, place, in spaces where the best of black culture can thrive, where black men are more likely to have a mortgage and a picket fence than a record, where black women are business executives and vice presidents, where our trans sisters and brothers don't fear being themselves. But this dream that I, that Rev all sharped in, that Martin Luther King III have for black Americans cannot be realized until we have a federal government with our best interests at heart. For our part, Brady and Team Enough are engaged in a campaign to remove barriers to, to casting a ballot, making vote by mail available to all, ensuring ballot drop boxes are distributed, distributed equitably, restoring the voting rights of Americans who have paid their debt to society. We have so much good trouble to get into. I want to thank the community organizers of National Action Network, and especially their organizer in chief, the Reverend Al Sharpton and Martin Luther King III for the work that they do, not just today, but every day, and giving us a place at the table. As I returned from Louisville yesterday, where Breonna Taylor was brutally killed by LMPD, it is still clear that black women are still unprotected. As I stand here in pain from the aftermath of tear gas and rubber bullets, I realize that black women are still the backbone of this movement. 
My name is Alea Eastman, a student at Trinity Washington University, executive council member of Brady's Team Enough, co-founder and core organizer of Concerned Citizens DC, a grassroots group of young black organizers demanding true liberation for black people. Thank you.